Good morning. Thanks, Steve. Um, as Steve said, my name is Mike DuBose, and I'm the CEO of uh, Coaches. And um, we're going to kick this off today by kind of painting a picture of, trying to paint a picture of just who's in jail. Um, our panel today will be looking at, at who's in jail and and how the ACA can play an integral role in catalyzing linkages between community-based systems of care and correctional systems by creating new uh, eligibility and enrollment opportunities. Uh, can I get the slides? All right. The question, who's in jail, kind of uh, lends us to direct our attention to a segment of a larger number of people that are under some form of correctional supervision. A one-day snapshot in time shows us that here we're looking at about 7 million people that are engaged with the correctional system under some type of supervision. For perspective, just think about that. We're talking about 7 million people. For perspective, that's a million shy of the population in New York City. It's a lot of folks. Now, at that one moment in time, 10% of that 7 million, or that 700,000, reside in our local jails throughout the country while the remainder of that population is either in prison, probation, or on parole. Now, this static number is real misleading because it masks the true dynamics of the jail involvement. If you look at that other slide over there, that 11.6 that everybody's been talking about so far, we're going to be hearing that all day long. That's the total number of people that are intersecting with uh, the jails in a year. That 11.6 is far more than all of the other systems combined, be it parole, probation, or uh, prison. Now, between That's 700,000, 60% of that 700,000 are in jail pending disposition of charges and are essentially there because they can't afford to pay bail. Now, demographically, who are we talking about? We're talking about disproportionately young, male, people of color, who have low literacy levels. They have high rates of chronic diseases, infectious diseases, mental health and substance use issues. Compounding this is the fact that 80% of these individuals in a jail with chronic medical, medical conditions that have not been treated in the community prior to their arrest. That's significant. Now, the recent Mental health and substance abuse needs of people in jail are particularly striking. Um, a 2006 Bureau of Justice study said that, found that 64% of the jail inmates had a mental health problem. And that was either defined as a recent diagnosis or recent symptoms of a mental health problem. In addition, in 09, another study found that anywhere between 15% to 31%, 15 of men, 31% of women had serious mental illnesses. And those mental illnesses were characterized by either schizophrenia, depression, or uh, bipolar disorder. Among that jail population, 72% of those men and 75% of those women have co-occurring dis disorders as well. Moreover, numbers like these 
represent the fact that our jails have become our de facto mental health and substance abuse services providers in our communities across the country. We also see in a recent 2011 Adams study that anywhere between 60 to 80 percent of those arrested tested positive for one illegal substance in their system. In addition, 13 to 38 percent tested positive for multiple substances in their system. 13 to 30 percent had two or more arrests in a year, in the prior year. Now, despite the high prevalence of substance abuse and mental health problems, fewer than 10% of those arrested at eight of the 10 sites under this Adams study indicated having received treatment prior to their incarceration. So, given the size of the justice population and the population's health needs, it's imperative to provide linkages to services in the community is clear. The consequences for failing to do so are drastic. A 2007 study found that Washington State inmates had a mortality rate three and a half times greater than the general population. And that mortality rate for former inmate spikes during the first two weeks of release, after release, from that three and a half percent, three and a half times greater to 12 and a half times greater than the general population. This, the message here is clear. If you've recently been in jail, then your chances of dying due to overdose of, or HIV and AIDS or homicide, motor vehicle accidents or cancer or liver disease, your chances of dying are high. All right, so it looks like our speaker is here. And what I'll do now is transition and let them come up. You bet.